Leg and Greg Vegan Camp, the 1st of May 2021. Breakfast, banana and papaya. So these bananas, they are like the apple banana, but they are the round apple banana and they taste more or less like a Cavendish so people in Thailand also enjoy these apple bananas that are more round and have a more Cavendish taste even Lek likes these it's amazing and as you can see in the compost already a papaya gone and this papaya was filled with worms so it also is compost no waste only compost yeah I had my first bike ride this month, so this was great. The air quality is amazing. And look at these long and babies. Coming up in main season, August. So our different mulberry plants are still giving fruit, but it's not much, but still enough for, for us. Look at the sky. The rains came and a little bit of storms and destroyed some of the fence. We will look at that. Last month, people said, Oh, one person said in the comments that, whoa, it looks so dry. This month it looks so wet. I've been, uh, I've been uh, cutting the grass or the weeds. It changes really rapidly when the rains kick in. The, the people who know about weather and stuff here in Thailand say that we will have one of the years where there will be most rainfall in, in many, many years. So I'm looking forward to a very wet season wet rainy season wet wet season whoa bananas yeah they're coming like crazy like also good compost and also banana here garden jackfruit but I think this might be bad but it's still a bit soft here so it's ready to cut but I'm I'm guessing it's not so good jackfruits hanging around if they're not good when they get mature then it's good to eat them when they're like young and you can do all kinds of vegan dishes with these. These are amazing and good. It's good for food security. And my little uh, tomato project here is really going bad. All the worms are just infecting the tomatoes. So I'm I'm a little bit sad <laughs> about this, but it's okay. So maybe it's just because it's this season. So what I'm hoping is that the the bad tomatoes they still have seeds, so they will still seed, put seeds in the ground and also there's a mm, strawberry for next season and they're giving children and the, the tomatoes still keep popping up so I'm hoping like these will just keep growing with a little bit of weeds around and eventually I will find the time where it's good to have um, tomatoes in this area or maybe this area is just bad for tomatoes I, I'm not sure and also you can see there's a Cavendish coming up over there and the really good mulberry over there. Here we have the red Cavendish which is like very tasty. Everybody likes this and it has high market value. So the plan is to get as many of these red Cavendish planted everywhere. So yesterday I took, these are very young shoots, they're, I would say they are too young to take away from their mother. So they will just grow a little bit more. Here is another one. And here is a, a third one. This is almost ready to take from the mother. But I just let them grow a little bit more. Yesterday I took one, two, three children from this banana plant. And I planted them around. But the good thing about the, the apple banana, the Goi Namwa, is that it's like really it's very native to this area and it grows really well and you just need to you know make sure that it has enough soil and and when you plant them you need to plant them deep enough otherwise they will just collapse when they get bananas and the bananas will not grow very thick and juicy it's really good security plant because you have a lot of people like Fabian love that more than anything else and I love it too, and I love it with the smoothies because they are really creamy. But, I mean, if you have a lot, then you don't need more, then you need some other varieties, it's good. And we have 
Uh, what do you, can you guess what this is? This is a papaya tree. So this papaya is growing just under the the, the longan tree, which is not good because yeah, the longan trees are like sacred here in this area. So I will probably need to dig this one up and plant it somewhere else. Together with all the over there, we also have some uh, papaya trees under the longan tree. But the good thing of, about these papaya trees growing under the longan tree is that they can survive the dry dry season because they're under all the leaves. The 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 area under um, a longan tree is very like a forest. There's always mulch, always um, some leaves, and and the rest of the long uh, longan tree will protect from direct sunlight and it's just like a mega good environment for making um, small plant nurseries. So it's May and you know, you babies are coming up, the mamuang, mangoes. Yeah, and the storm totally destroyed my, my little drying rack project. So the roof is uh, over there and yeah. But now I will try to, I think I planted I don't. I think cucumbers. It will be cucumbers. This is, will be a cucumber area. Let's see if that works. This wood that was dumped here some time ago, when the rice storage at mom's house was upgraded, and and all this wood is like teak wood, very nice wood. Before all the termites eat it, there will be a new building nearby the entrance of the vegan camp. Even though. The mangoes are protected by bags, they will still crack and the mango will not always crack just because it's been uh, infected by, by eggs from a bug. It will also crack if the moisture is strange and if, if yeah, there are many hypotheses of why mangoes crack, but there will still be some mangoes that crack and some mangoes that won't, so it's just um, how nature is, I guess. Cracked mangoes that haven't been bagged yet, and small mangoes that haven't been bagged, and oh, I need to bag those. So the weeds have already been cut here, but they're popping up really, really quickly. And in this area where we have the, the rice straw, this is the latest rice straw from last November. And that, that is the, the rice straw from two years ago. And there's still some rice straw and other debris here. And I just planted a couple of weeks ago more pumpkin and they're already growing so they can grow together with some of the weeds but yeah it's just hard to navigate around here and find the pumpkin if it's just mega weedy everywhere a lot of weeds and over there also with cucumbers and other things and beans yeah in this area we have here more pump pumpkin and I'm also just experimenting just throwing uh, a bit of pumpkin under some straw and just covering it and uh, see if it pops up and it does. And I don't know how much it will produce but it's also over here. The good thing about the rice straw is like it's uh, a lot of compost and a lot of stuff going on in here so it's really 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 nice and it just feeds the the plants and they grow. Maybe they will cover all the, the whole area here in uh, in a month or two and also here under the the mango tree, small mango tree that doesn't produce much mango this year. And the domesticated chicken from, from our neighbors are just like very happy about this area where, where we have the, the leaves from the temple and other mulches like coconut husks. And they just love to dig around here and take away the niceness of this uh, compost. Probably they will, they also dig around this and it will speed up the composting process, so maybe it's not that bad. And also you can see that this is a very good area. I don't know if you can spot them, but like in the morning these mushrooms were just like very nice. And um, yeah, there are mushrooms growing, so the fungi is working. There's stuff here, every, all kinds of stuff. I, I just dump... In the early time I just dumped some food scrapes here, their compost, and then just covered up with the leaves. And now, because it's just, I don't know where I just put the scrapes, so now I'm just dumping more 
um, food scrapes and then just going to the rice straw and taking and just putting uh, on top of the, uh, the, the food scrapes. And the problem of doing that sometimes is that if you don't cover or dig it down there will be animals going and eating your, your compost which is not so good so if you don't have like a managed stuff but I think it's okay if you have like low maintenance uh, then it's uh, quite good. I, I love the idea of very little input and then getting something out of it. So if I don't need to use a lot of, lot of energy on doing composting and stuff and I still get food and stuff out of it then it's, it's fine by me. There's always ways to optimize it but it also needs to be compared to how much time you use on it. So low input and average output, I love it. Uh, and here we have one of the red Cavendish planted and another Cavendish and the neighbor also is uh, cutting the weeds. I love it. No spray. No spray right now. Which is really nice. And so this is... This is... Our land. And, and this is the neighbor. And it's super nice when everything is just working without any sprays or herbicides. And the mountains and fresh air, it's so mega nice. And the mangoes are dropping for various reasons. This one is already soft inside. It's like, yeah, maybe it was infected or something. I'm not sure what's, what's wrong with this one. Yeah, but it's very good in raw salads. Yeah, so my, my lovely red Cavendish, which I planted a long time ago, last year or something, it was destroyed by the, the storm fell down so I needed to just cut the top off and then raise it again and hope that, that it will revive. Or if it just gets some children. It might get some children or did they die in the process too? I'm not sure. And another Cavendish and some other plants. The avocados failed, all of them failed in the dry season. So maybe I should plant some now because this rainy season will be very wet and maybe more banana guardians and to protect the the land here from spray from neighbors this land which is the same area coverage like this it's uh, five rye it's almost a, a hectare of land actually this is like 7700 so it's not almost a hectare, but it's 7,700, about 7,700 square meters. Really nice, so in a couple of years, without any burning and any spraying, this will also be a very nice area for growing a lot of nice food. But otherwise, this is just like a, a wall from all the other areas that are using chemicals. But luckily, also, is that people around here, like, like being a farmer in Thailand is not like the most lucrative um, economically. So you don't have a lot of money to spend on, on chemicals. And specifically now, I mean, it's a very long time ago I, I, I was bothered by people spraying. And that's because also of the, the COVID crisis. And when there is a crisis and there is a little money around, then people need to think about new ways of doing things. And that's mega nice. So behind me is the, the new extension of Leck and Greg Vegan Camp. So if you want to build a house of bamboo or adobe or something, you're welcome to come and just do whatever you want here almost. And uh, yeah, it would be nice. Then you can stay as much as you want in your adobe or bamboo house. That would be cool. Another mango bites the dust. Her leg was very worried about her avocado trees. But these are actually two trees here. I don't know if these are, oh, maybe these are actually new. Maybe just like planted new ones here. Because, yeah, I don't know what happened last time. They don't, they didn't thrive well. And here's also a tr avocado trying to survive. And over here, yeah, leg planted a new one because the other one died. And this is also avocado or not? Maybe something else? Something else? No, avocado. This is also avocado. And we 
have papaya. These are really, really nice. Papayas, as always, needed to be harvested for the birds eat them. Oh, we need to leave something for the birds, but yeah. We also need to have something for ourselves. And you can probably spot them over there. And what you can see here is the new construction of the from the wood that was from the old rice storage at mom's house, Lex mom's house. And as you can see over here, over there, there is like a, a papaya tree that died because it almost fell down. It was too heavy and too tall. So now there's a stump left and maybe they will be growing uh, like small papayas branches out from the side. You can see that there's already green stuff coming out of them and it will be exciting to to follow it or if it just will come die completely so there was a major storm and it all these chaya plants were just like down on the road everywhere we needed to cut it everything down and this front area just collapsed and yeah and it was like a bit not so super nice and then we also needed to support this part with some other wood and now it seems to to work and also we improved the the area out there so it's like planting chaya very close together so the the domesticated chicken from the neighbor won't be able to come in and also now this area is uh, so from from here where the, this is the old entrance so from here and all all this land to the end of the road down there this is uh, this will be Lek and Greg vegan camp in a couple of days. The asparagus fields are producing a bit, which is nice. Addition to some salads and some stir-fried stuff. Water stir-fried, no oil, please. Yeah, and the mulberry area. I mean, when the rain kicks in, it's just insane how much stuff is going on and mulberries are going bad and stuff. This rose apple tree is very nice, it's very beautiful and has very beautiful flowers and the fruit is also nice but we have a lot of worm in these uh, ro um, uh, rose uh, apples right now. So either uh, I will need to find a way to bag them in a nice way or I will, uh, they will maybe in a next season or different month when they produce the fruit then they will not have so many bugs because when the rain kicks in they're like the bug amount in fruit and tomatoes and everything is just exploding so many mulberries hmm. wow and I mean, it's really nice not to have to go to a supermarket or something else let go to the plant and, and find your food. Mulberries, mulberries. So, and if you have mulberry, you can be like become very beautiful. So, if you want to use ma makeup and stuff, if you love that, then just use some plants. I think that's the best makeup you can get. Now it, my camera has makeup. So you're lucky today actually. They are the, the bee swarm that has a house or had a house here are moving. And this is how it looks. I mean, I'm not sure this camera can capture it, but there are bees everywhere. They're swarming, moving. mega nice sound and these are the leftovers so dear beekeepers how much how much honey is left here after the bees are gone not <laughs> anything the the bees have found okay all the long and trees long and flowers have been pollinated and now there is no honey left it's just the empty house so all the hypothesis about that you can take the honey from the bees without having an impact is, I don't think that is true. Those of who don't know, the bees, 
that are being kept by beekeepers, the beekeepers will give them sugars to to keep them alive and then take their honey. So it's like um, taking away the fruit from humans. Like if somebody came here and took take away my bananas and just gave me sugar water to drink. So that w I would be very angry. Honey is for bees, not for humans. And the bees are very important in a in uh, all the nature because they are pollinators and uh, I mean I think Lek was stung by a bee but usually bees don't sting much because I'm not sh I don't know if all bees are like that but m some bees will die if they use their sting yeah now they're gone now they have pollinated everything now they're finding an area that is more with more flowers Today's harvest of papayas from papaya tree to papaya mouth. 